Welcome to part 9 of this video tutorial series on animation trees in UDK. In this tutorial we'll be exploring a method on how to blend different animations depending on the type of weapon that a player is holding. Because most of the concepts required for this have been built up over past tutorials, I'm going to keep this one nice and brief and just demonstrate the functionality of one node and how it can help you plan your animation tree. I'm not going to show in-game demonstrations or anything like that, just explain the use of this one node. But firstly we'll take a look at animation from a programming perspective. One of the great benefits of UDK is that it has a great set of tools for artists to use and you want to be able to offload as much as the work possible to your artists. In the last tutorial we set up slots and showed how to call animations on them through code but this is a very programming centric approach to make it functional for all your weapons and to tweak any kind of parameters and values and blending and all those kind of things. So by giving your artist a few custom nodes to work with, as well as a sensible approach to your programming and animation tree design, you can offload a vast majority of this work onto them. From an artistic point of view, you'd like to be able to have as much control as you can over animations and how they work, and that's one of the great benefits of the animation tree. There's very little programmer involvement for you to get something that looks good as an artist. However, when it comes to something like setting up weapon functionality and the various animations you need, a programmer and artist are going to need to work together to figure out the best balance. The setup we use will be very dependent on the kind of game that you're making and the functionality that you need. Now if you've done much poking around in animation trees before this, you might have noticed that there's two nodes called UDK Blend by Weapon and UDK Blend by Web Type. These are two nodes from UDK and indeed Unreal Tournament that are designed to handle some weapon animation functionality. Now for our purposes they're fairly useless because they are designed for Unreal Tournament and we're looking for much more functionality than what they have. Um, these nodes can change blending depending on whether the player is holding a weapon or not and there was a tutorial in the past on how to set up custom animation nodes. So if you'd like to look at exploring those you can have a look at the example code included in UDK for those and also the tutorial on custom nodes and you can use that to set up a little bit of logic in terms of different animation paths that are taken depending on whether your player is holding a weapon or not. There's also an animation node sequence called UDK Anim Node Seek Web, which lists all the weapon types that are in UT and allows us to define an animation for them. Now this is also another useful one because we can use this, we have a standard animation sequence here, and all this new node does is add a section here that lists all our weapons, and the code changes the active animation to one of those ones there whenever our node becomes relevant. So it's also another useful approach, and using a standard blend node with different outputs or a single sequence with different animation names, it's going to be a decision that your team, programmers and artists are going to have to make. So I'm not going to show you how to do each of these approaches because the me methods and techniques to do both of these have, have been explained in previous tutorials. But in terms of how we can actually blend between different weapons, um, the different types and only have them affect part of the body, um, I'm going to show you this node called uh, Anim, where is it? So it's called Filter Anim Node Blend Per Bone. Now on this node we have two inputs here. We have a source and a target. Now the source are anim is an animation that gets played on all the bones in your skeleton and the target is an animation that gets masked onto a set of bones. If you remember the slot tutorial, uh, the slot animation tutorial previously, you remember that we set up this um, branch start bone name and these are the bones that this top half slot animation got masked to. This is pretty much an identical approach that we take here. So if we just set this up simply like this and run this through, you can see we have this output animation set here which is our running playing on our skeleton. So what we'll do now is just chuck in our animation sequence and we're going to use our pistol idle animation so further on there have it looping and playing and link that up to our target. Now as you can see even if we change the weighting towards this node, nothing's happening. That's because we haven't defined the branch of bones that we want to actually play this animation on. So the bones we want to play this on 
uh, pretty much our top half, so our head, arms, and most of our back. So we'll use Bipo One Spine, and you can see instantly that when we're actually masking this animation on, we have the head, back, and both arms, um, kind of working. In this situation, the animation is only really one arm, so it doesn't look too appropriate having this left arm here just sitting by itself. So what we'll do instead is perhaps just change this to only affect the right arm. So we change that to the right clavicle, which is the shoulder downwards, and you can see we're now only affecting the right arm. We're not affecting the head, or the back, or the left arm. This is probably looking much more reasonable. Now you're not limited to simply just one branch of bones. You can hit the plus button over here and add yourself another branch. So for instance, just to show this is working, I might add the left arm as well. You can see our left arm is stiff and only our left arm and right arm are being mas masked with this piece of Lyle animation. The rest of our body is playing our running animation from the source. Now similarly, we could use this to display our iron sight idling animation or our reloading animation. Uh, in these kind of instances for something like reloading, you'd want to go back to the tutorial on uh, animation notifications or um, you know the anim end anim play events that we can use here. So whenever real animation gets played and completed, you can notify your pawn that the reload has been completed and switch your animations back. So that's all there is to this anim node blend per bone. If you were to compile this jumping game and have a look you'd see you've got your character running around with a pistol and just to update these nodes and set it up for your weapon structure there's a limitless number of possibilities you can use you can use the standard lists um, looking up all your blends from code naming them and looking them up uh, slots all those kind of things there are a number of, of different approaches that you can take in how you want to structure your animation tree um, there are still numerous topics and nodes that I haven't covered throughout these nine tutorials and I really encourage you to experiment with those yourselves. Uh, there's some great functionality that you can play around with here, um, UDN and the built-in animation trees are a great example of some of the nodes. Um, so thanks for watching these tutorials. I hope this one and all past ones have been helpful to you. Thanks for watching.